On January 27, 1945, Allied troops entered Auschwitz-Birkenau, the most important concentration and extermination camp of the Third Reich. What they found in there horrified them, all the suspicions of the inhumane practices of the Nazis were verified when they toured the facilities of that authentic factory of death. It is estimated that a total of 1.3 million people passed through, of which 1.1 million died in the most horrific ways. But even more shocking than the figures were the experiences reported by those few who survived to put a face and a voice to the suffering. In this new military history video we are going to learn about the daily life of a prisoner inside Auschwitz-Birkenau, a true hell on earth. Auschwitz-Birkenau was the most infamous of a huge network of forced labor and extermination camps that were set up by Nazi Germany. These facilities began to appear long before the start of the Second World War itself, whose initial kick was the invasion of Poland by the Third Reich in 1939. Initially these places were not intended for mass elimination, but for the detention of citizens. Jews, political rebels and other minorities who were taken prisoner by Germany. But it soon became clear that the racist ideology of the Third Reich and the operation of these places were not compatible, for the Nazi mind, the most logical response was the extermination of millions of people. This is how the forced labor camps became killing fields. Prisoners arrived at Auschwitz by train, herded together like cattle. Upon arrival, they were given a triangular piece of cloth with a particular color that identified why they were there, and that had to be sewn above the prisoner number that was read on their clothing. Political prisoners had to wear a red triangle, criminals of German origin, a green triangle, as for prostitutes and gypsies, their color was black, homosexuals wore a pink triangle. Finally, the Jews, who made up 80% of the population, wore a yellow patch in the shape of the Star of David. Later, the nationality of each prisoner was identified with a letter inside the corresponding patch or triangle. This differentiation generated a racial hierarchy even among the prisoners, at the top were German political prisoners and criminals, then inmates of various ethnic origins, and below all the Jews, who received less rations and basic care. Before being distributed in the Auschwitz barracks, the prisoners were examined by doctors who determined if they were fit for work. If they did not pass the tests, their destiny had two options, either they were eliminated immediately, or they were used as guinea pigs in scientific experiments. You're probably familiar with Joseph Mengel's horrendous procedures, but he wasn't the only doctor who injected poisonous solutions, mutilated, and operated without anesthesia. Those selected for extermination were sent to the showers, which were actually gassing chambers with pipes that filled the room with the poisonous Zyklon B gas. This is one of the greatest tragedies of World War II, as many of the people who lost their lives there, mainly the mentally ill and crippled, were not even registered by the Germans, so a 100% accurate count of the victims is practically impossible. In principle, the purpose of the prisoners was to be slaves and work to boost Germany's war industry. The day began at 4.30 in the morning in summer and at 5.30 in winter, when visibility was lower. The prisoners were awakened with the sound of a bong, then they had to tidy their room and go to a common room to receive the first meal of the day. Breakfast was a simple tea or coffee, enough to wake them up for the day but not enough to nourish them. That's why they immediately lost weight and after a few months were practically walking corpses waiting for the moment when their energy ran out to collapse. Before starting the work, the prisoners were arranged in groups to be counted. If the numbers didn't match, the count started over, which could be especially hard on the inmates considering they were dressed in rags and the summer and winter weather could be lethal. Once the count was completed, the day's work was divided, the prisoners were organized into groups while the camp orchestra played German marches to set the day to music. Some prisoners had scheduled activities several kilometers from the camp, so they did not participate in the routine count and had to leave Auschwitz hours before. The same was the case with prisoners who participated in internal activities such as the hospital, the kitchen, or even the orchestra. They had to be ready before the bulk of the prisoner population woke up. In 1944, as the war escalated and Germany needed more and more production of goods to sustain itself, 
The morning count was eliminated in order to maximize the working day. In Auschwitz the prisoners carried out different tasks, both inside and outside the limits of the place. The days were long and exhausting, since March 1942, the minimum number of daily working hours was 11 hours. This schedule was extended in summer, due to a greater number of hours with sunlight, and was shortened in winter. As with breakfast, lunch was a mere formality that occurred between 12 and 1 noon, although it could be extended depending on the time of year. The food consisted of a basic mixture of semi-rotten vegetables that served only to fill the stomachs of the hundreds of thousands of prisoners, with no nutritional value other than to fool the hungry stomachs of the workers. Any minimal mistake during the working day was a sufficient excuse for physical torment that could range from severe blows to the ribs, whippings, or even spontaneous executions. In Auschwitz, no day ended with the same number of prisoners with which it had begun, hundreds or even thousands of inmates died daily. At night, the prisoners returned to the camp under SS guard. They frequently returned carrying the lifeless bodies of those who had died during the grueling workday. The prisoners had a moment to clean themselves in less than ideal conditions, cleanliness was not a priority and this was the focus of infections and diseases that could kill entire barracks of people. At 9 p.m. the final gong sounded, announcing the nocturnal silence, which lasted until the beginning of the next day. At Auschwitz-Birkenau, the bodies of those who died during the day were taken to the gigantic crematoria set up by Rudolf Hess. By 1942, three ovens were operating with the capacity to eliminate 340 people each in the span of a day, a number that would increase over time. In the rawest and most violent moments, even prisoners who were still alive were thrown into its flames. When the Red Army entered Auschwitz, one of the images that struck the soldiers the most was a huge mountain built with the shoes of the people killed in the facilities. It was a terrifying sight, hundreds of thousands of shoes, each belonging to a person who had endured the worst hardship imaginable before succumbing to starvation, abuse, or disease. The day-to-day -day in Auschwitz was a hellish routine that ended the lives of more than a million people, so it is important to review the facts about one of the greatest tragedies in human history. This is how we come to the end of this video, we hope you found it as interesting as we did, we look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Military History.